Before we start, I just want to say one thing, that this video is not a complete, fully in-depth video of every single damn plugin within Ableton Live. Sort of treat this video as a quick start guide, a quick refresher to what Ableton has to offer right out of the box. So that being said, let's get started. Let's start with instruments. Our first one is Analog. This is a virtual analog synthesizer with a slight twist. See, Analog isn't actually modeled after anything. In fact, Ableton created this plugin to combine multiple features from various famous synthesizers into one modern plugin. The oscillators provide for a lovely, warm and realistic sound while still obtaining its current edginess. So if you guys are interested in making that synth wave or the 80s influenced music, Analog is a serious piece of kit for you guys. Next up is Collision. This synth actually simulates the characteristics of mallet percussion instruments. It has a mallet and a noise oscillator which actually make their way through the resonators and in return output some really interesting things. This is definitely one to have an evening with. Moving on to drum rack, this one is pretty self-explanatory. So we can load up a bunch of audio one shots onto these pads and program our drums in. The drum rack also allows us to create some send and return chains too, which is pretty handy. We also have the addition of a simpler when a one shot is loaded. Uh, this will just allow us to adjust and manipulate the sample in a specific way. We can also load up pre-made kits like the 808 kit or a whole bunch of other ones that Ableton actually offer. Drum synth. Again, pretty straightforward. We have different drum synths that we can load up on a track and then we can literally start tweaking to get our desired sound. Next is electric. Electric is an electric piano actually modeled after classic instruments of the 70s and electric actually allows you to tweak a few parameters to help you get the sound you are looking for. Electric is also modeled by physical modeling, so no sampling or wavetables or anything like that here. External instrument. Now, this is actually not an instrument, okay? It actually allows you to route external gear such as synthesizers into Ableton, and also it can rewire some devices and multi tombral plugins in your projects too. After that, we've got the Impulse. Impulse is a drum sampler which allows up to eight drum samples to be loaded, and uh, you can time stretch your one shots, you can filter them out, and do a whole bunch of other things to your one shots in the impulse machine now whether you want to use impulse or drum rack i think that's going to be a discussion for another video instrument rack so instrument racks allow you to create a place where you can put in uh, vsts and a bunch of other effects too they are really handy to set up macros all you need to do is literally map out the parameters you want to use and send them off to a macro you can also save your instrument racks too for a much faster workflow now within the instrument rack you can do so much more but again remember guys i'm just going over this very quickly just to give you a brief introduction as to what these plugins do all right, so let's move on to Operator. Operator is a synth that combines classic subtractive and additive synthesis with frequency modulation. It has four oscillators with a small bunch of waveforms to choose from. Operator is great for creating those classic FM bells and also those really aggressive basses that we hear a lot in trap and dubstep and drum and bass music. Sampler. The sampler is a multi-sample device that allows you to map different samples onto different keys. The sampler also has an inbuilt modulation system which opens up a heap of new possibilities for when you're using it. Now, this sampler is only in the Sweet Edition of Ableton Live. However, if you don't own the Sweet Edition, don't worry. You guys have the Simpler. Yes, as the name suggests, you could look at this as a simple version of the sampler. However, it's slightly different. The Simpler does not allow for multi-sampling and does not have a lot of the bells and whistles of the sampler. However, the Simpler is a great tool for slicing up your audio and getting a little bit more creative with your audio. Tension. If you guys love string instruments, then Tension is for you. This synth is also based on physical modeling and again, it uses no wavetables or any samples or anything like that. With all these parameters on tension, you can dial in the correct combination that will give you a realistic sounding string instrument. So definitely play with this one in your free time. Wavetable. 
Okay, so this one here is a really popular one. Ableton's wavetable is a dual oscillator wavetable synth and uh, it offers analog modeled filters, a bunch of modulation and so, so, so much more. Wavetable synthesis is definitely one of my favorites and I do use this synth from time to time to make pads and basses and literally everything else in between. All right, let's move on to the audio effects. So in Ableton 11, they have been grouped into folders like this. Now you can right click and ungroup them so you can go back to Ableton 10. If you did come from Ableton 10, that is, you can have that sort of classic view um, or you can just leave them in their new folders like this. Let's take a look at the first folder, which is delay and loop. The very first thing is beat repeat. And beat repeat is exactly that. It's an audio effects plugin that can be used to repeat parts of a loop, whether it's audio or MIDI. Great for adding some glitchiness to your music. Next up is delay, a really easy to use delay in Ableton. Most of us know what delay is, but for those that don't, a delay captures a signal and stores it in some sort of storage buffer for a set amount of time before releasing it back into our mix. This specific delay has both left and right delay lanes, which can be changed independently of each other, allowing us to create a more flexible and more creative delay pattern. After that, we've got Echo. The Echo device is a modulation delay effect that also has a left and right channel for independence. It has its similarities with the previous delay I just went over. However, the Echo is just nicer to work with in my opinion. It also has some extra features like a built-in reverb and a whole bunch of other modulation stuff as well that you can play around with. Filter delay. So the filter delay has three independent delay lines with built-in filters. This is pretty cool as we can filter out each delay line as we wish. Moving on to the grain delay. This delay is fairly different to the previous ones I've mentioned because the grain delay actually works by slicing the input signal into tiny particles called grains. And these grains are then individually delayed, giving us a really unique sounding delay. Pretty cool. Definitely mess around with this one because you can get some really cool textures with it. Next in the list is Looper. This audio effect device is based on classic real-time looping devices and allows you to record and loop audio. You can also create endless overdubs in your sets too. Spectral Delay. So this one is a new one for Ableton Live 11 and this device actually breaks up the incoming signal into partials and allows you to really get creative with sound design. And that is actually everything in the delay and loop folder. So let's actually move on to the drive and color folder now. The first one to start the party off is the amp. The amp is a guitar amp that emulates seven classic guitar amplifiers, and we can adjust the gain, the bass, the mids, the treble, and so much more. Don't underestimate this plugin and what it can do because it can really bring out some color and some really nice textures to your music. I know it looks pretty basic, but you can get some really good tones out of it, I promise. Cabinet. The cabinet device emulates five classic guitar cabs and allows you to also reposition the microphone and choose between condenser and dynamic mic, which is pretty cool. Next up is the drum bus, which is an analog style processor that can really add some bite and some grit to your drums. We can increase the drive and choose between three types of distortions. We can add some fixed compression to glue things together just to make the sound a little bit better. And uh, also we can adjust the transients and just so much more with the drum bus. And here's a little tip with the drum bus, right? I sometimes use the drum bus to really thicken up pads. They sound really, really nice on pads. And don't be afraid to use the drum bus on your master as well. Just a little pro tip, but just be careful you don't peek anything or go a little bit too crazy with the processing. All right, let's move on to the dynamic tube. The dynamic tube is a tube saturator with three different models, A, B, and C, which all provide their very own character to your mix. Erosion is an envelope folding noise generator that degrades the input signal and uh, this device can actually introduce some really cool digital sounding distortions and artifacts in your music. The overdrive device is a classic guitar effect with parameters such as drive, tone, dynamics and a few other cool things too. We also have access to the filter at the top which allows us to shape our drive sound. Next up is the pedal, and as you guys guess, yep, this is just a standard guitar pedal with three different modes, overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. We can also adjust the bass, the mids, and the treble to shape our sound a little bit further. 
Redux. Now the Redux plugin reduces the signal's sample rate and bit resolution. You can get some cool retro-ish effects and um, get some really unique coloration to your music by using the Redux plugin. Saturator. This plugin is a wave shaping effect that can add some harmonics and some subtle elements of distortion in your track. Great for thickening up your signal and making it cut through in the mix. Vinyl Distortion. Now this again sort of speaks for itself. It emulates distortions that occur on vinyl records during playback. So that's that folder done. <laughs> Let's go on to the Dynamics folder. Compressor. The famous Ableton Compressor, a compressor that allows you to control the dynamics in your track. Now in a nutshell, compressors can bring down the loud signals and increase the quiet signals, resulting in a nice balanced sound source. Onto the second plugin in the Dynamics folder, and it is the Gate. Now the Gate allows for signals to pass above a specific threshold. We can use Gates to eliminate any low level hum or noise in our recordings, and uh, we can actually use Gates for sound design purposes too. So really experiment with this plugin. Moving on to another type of compressor in Ableton, and that is the glue compressor. Essentially, it's still a compressor and it still controls the dynamic range in our tracks, but the glue compressor is actually an analog modeled compressor and works the best on groups or your mix bus, for example. And as the name suggests, it does well to glue your track together. Moving on onto the limiter. The limiter is actually a compressor with an infinite fix ratio. It's a great tool to use on the master of your track to prevent any clipping. Although the limiter sounds like a very basic tool, it still has quite a steep learning curve to it. Multiband Dynamics is a really powerful tool in Ableton, which allows you to manipulate the dynamics of up to three frequency bands. So you can individually control each band and apply a different amount of compression to them. And the multiband dynamics also allows for upwards and downwards compression too. So plenty of fun to be had here. On to the next folder, EQ and filters. The very first on the list is the auto filter. The auto filter provides an analog filter emulation and allows us to easily cut the highs or the lows and just so much more. The auto filter is a great plugin for when you want to automate some of the parameters such as the frequency dial or the resonance for example. Channel EQ, a simple three band EQ which allows you to adjust the lows, mids and highs. Nothing too fancy here, it just gets the job done. Onto the next one, Ableton's famous EQ8. I think most Ableton users would agree with me when I say that EQ8 is probably the most popular EQ out of the bunch. However, if you do have the intro edition or the light edition of Ableton, you don't get the EQ8, unfortunately. But the EQ8 features up to eight parametric filters and allows you to really carve out and shape your signal. We can choose to EQ in stereo mode, mid side, left, right. We also have this lovely analyzer in the back, which is really handy as well. Last of the bunch is the EQ3, another basic EQ that allows you to adjust the lows, mids and the highs, but it's slightly different to the channel EQ. Although you can still EQ as normal on the EQ3, you can also mute any of the three bands, which is pretty cool. Onto the modulators. Now, these modulators are max for live devices within Ableton Live. So you may or you may not have them depending on what edition of Ableton you have. Right, first up, the envelope follower. The envelope follower captures a signal and reshapes its amplitude course. We can use this device with more or less anything. We just hit this little map button and click on any parameter you want it to affect. Moving on, we have the LFO device. Again, it works in a similar fashion to the envelope follower. You just have to press this little map button and send it off to wherever you want. And lastly, the shaper device. The shaper device is a multi breakpoint envelope, which generates modulation for musical expression. And yes, I did just quote that from the Ableton manual because I have never actually used this plugin. This is definitely one I'm going to experiment with and Again, it works in the same way by mapping the device to another device's parameter. And if you guys are enjoying this video so far, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell as well too. It'll be much appreciated. Right, so pitch and modulation folder. First in this list is the auto pan. And again, as the name suggests, it allows you to automatically pan your signal. It does this by the LFO that drives the amplitude and panning. 
You can get some really creative effects using this plugin and it's great just to add a little bit of movement in your tracks. So try it out on your hi-hats or a vocal sample or you can try it out on more or less anything. So next up I'm actually going to combine the chorus and uh, the phaser flanger as well. All of these devices offer that classic modulated sound that we all hear all the time. Again these effects are great for adding a little bit of width or a bit of colour and separation in your track so definitely go have fun with these as well. The frequency shifter is a great tool for sound design. You can achieve some really metallic and dissonant effects with this. The next folder is the reverb and resonance folder. And let's start off with corpus. Right, so Ableton actually say that corpus is an effect that simulates the acoustic characteristics of seven types of resonant objects. And to be honest, I couldn't have said it better. Corpus is a great plugin to add some tonal differences to your sound. It can really give you some unique textures in your track. So we have this drop down menu with a bunch of materials to choose from and whichever we choose will obviously have a different sound to them. New for Ableton Live 11 is the hybrid reverb. This allows us to combine different types of reverbs together to create some unique textures in our music. We have two main parts on this reverb. On the left, we've got our convolutional IR or impulse response. And on the right, we have our algorithmic section or our algorithm section. And we can use this blend knob to blend between our convolutional reverb and our algorithm. I actually really like this hybrid reverb and I think it's a great addition to Ableton Live 11. I'll definitely be using this a lot more. The next plugin is the resonators and this consists of five parallel resonators that add tonal color to your input signal. Now I'll be honest, I haven't had much experience with the resonator plugin, but I have heard you can get some really, really interesting results with it. Reverb, Ableton's original reverb plugin that I use so much is so damn good. We can apply a filter on this reverb, but we can actually add some movement by adding some chorus to it. Um, we can change the reflect, we can change the diffusion. Uh, overall, this is just a really nice sounding reverb with so many parameters to play with, and uh, you can get really creative with the stock Ableton reverb. Spectral Resonator. Now the Spectral Resonator is also a new plugin that was added for Ableton Live 11. The Spectral Resonator breaks down the incoming signals into partials and then mangles it by stretching, blurring and time shifting it. Vocoder. Now you have definitely heard the vocoder sound in countless amount of songs by Daft Punk, Bruno Mars and just so many more. In a nutshell, a vocoder is an effect that connects the frequency information of an audio signal with the amplitude contour of another signal. And these two are called the carrier and the modulator. The vocoder is a great tool if you want to add some cool, interesting vocal tricks in your track. Not only that, you guys can actually use it on whatever you want, wherever you want, just to get super, super creative with it. Now onto the last folder in the audio effects tabs, utilities. So we start off with the audio effects rack. Now think of this as a parent to all of your audio effects. You can place audio effects within the audio effects rack and set up macros to control certain parameters, etc., etc. You can also make an audio rack and just save it and open it up in whatever project you want. So it's really similar to the instrument rack and really allows us to quickly get to work. Now next up is the external audio effect and again I never have really had to use this to be honest because I don't really mix in Ableton too much but the external audio effect allows you to root in external hardware effects units so if you've got um, compressors or reverb etc etc most likely you will need to use this and if you don't well then you won't probably be using this plugin that much. Spectrum. The Spectrum is just a real-time analyzer that analyzes incoming signal. It retains the peak level information until the track has been restarted. The tuner is exactly that. Nope, not the fish. It just shows the tuning of your current sample. So great for finding out the pitch of your 808s or pitch of any one-shot sort of um, synths, anything like that. Lastly is the utility, probably one of the most powerful things in Ableton. Utility allows you to mono your signal, add width, trim, flip the phase and more. So it's essentially all the important things in one plugin. I use this utility plugin all the time. Well, so only a few more to go through. Let's move on to the MIDI effects tab. Now we can see some Max for Live devices in here, but I won't be covering them in this video or this video will become super, super long. 
So let's start with the arpeggiator. Well, firstly, what is it? Well, if you play a chord in just a normal triad chord, you're going to have three notes, right? So if I played a C major chord, we've got a C, E and a G. Now, when I play this chord, we can hear the harmony that it creates, right? This tells us it's a C major chord. When we put an arpeggiator on it, it will actually cycle through each of those notes individually. So it will start with the C, then move to the E, then move to the G. And depending on what pattern we actually pick, it can go up and down, it can go uh, in reverse. It can, we could do a lot of things with it. And different arpeggiators obviously have different settings, but the Ableton arpeggiator actually has quite a few settings that we can mess around with. Like I said, we can actually come to this little drop down menu and choose from a pattern to work with. We can then fine tune everything else by just literally messing around with all the other parameters. Next up is the chord plugin. And as the name suggests, we can make chords using this plugin. We can change the shift dials to go up or down in semitones. So if we want to create a major chord, I would just do this. And lastly, I'll change this to seven. And now when I press a key down on my keyboard, we get a major chord. Pretty easy, right? So moving on to the MIDI effects rack. And just like the audio and instrument racks, the MIDI works in the exact same way. We can chain a bunch of MIDI effects together and we can actually save our MIDI effect rack for later use, etc., etc. Moving on to note length, really basic. Note length just adjusts the length of our notes in our MIDI clip. Pitch is just a transpose tool. It changes the incoming signal by plus or minus 128 semitones. Random, yes, you can probably guess what this is. The random plugin adds an element of randomness to your MIDI signal pitch. Moving on to the scale plugin, the scale plugin alters incoming note pitch based on scale mapping. Each incoming note is given an outgoing equivalent of the XY scale map on the effect. All incoming Cs, for example, can be converted into outgoing Ds. Now, if this confused you a little bit, don't worry, have a little play around with it. And um, it's actually a pretty easy plugin to pick up. And the last one to end this all is the Velocity plugin. The Velocity can alter incoming MIDI note velocity values. So one to 127 in either a controlled or a random manner. Well, that was a ton of things I just covered. And again, I only just gave you a quick brief overview of Ableton Live's plugins. If you want me to go into more detail about any of these plugins in the videos, please drop a comment down below and uh, let me know. I'll be more than happy to work on them. Smash that like button, comment down below and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I see you guys in the next one.